Hi everybody, I'm Luna. Welcome back to Luna. Oi. It has now been about eight months since the COVID-19 pandemic began spreading all over the world. As of now, there have been over 17 million cases, and nearly 700,000 people have died because of this horrible virus. Some of the best doctors and scientists in the world are working day and night to find a vaccine and medicine to cure this disease. As you may have heard, my country, Vietnam, has been extremely successful at containing the disease. I have already made many videos about this. Links are in the description if you want to watch. So in Vietnam, we had completely contained the virus for 99 days. For over three months, we hadn't found any a single new case inside Vietnam. Any new cases that had been reported were from outside of Vietnam, and they were already in quarantine when they were discovered. But now, I have some really sad, sad news for you. Last week, on July 25th, Vietnam found a new COVID-19 patient in Da Nang City, the city I live in. Even more sadly, Vietnam can no longer say we have had zero deaths from COVID-19. That's because in the last 24 hours, we have had our first two deaths from COVID-19. The two patients who just passed away in the last 24 hours were both about 70 years old and had severe pre-existing health conditions. In fact, they were already in hospital when they caught the disease. Our whole nation is now in mourning for these two deaths. But let's back up and talk about what led to these deaths. Here's what we know. On July 20th, a 60-year-old man came to a hospital in Da Nang with severe symptoms of pneumonia. He came to Da Nang Si Hospital to get treatment, and doctors immediately gave him a COVID-19 test, and the results were positive. He became our 416th COVID-19 patient, and the first case in community after three months. One day after that case was confirmed, one more case was found. Another 60-year-old man who got pneumonia symptoms from the same part of Da Nang City. Now they are both receiving hospital treatment. As soon as the government announced this, I knew immediately that there would be a lot of capitalist newspapers talking about this and trying to use this to make Vietnam look as bad as possible. And I was right. Let's look at some headlines from Western media. Vietnam braced for a fresh wave of coronavirus despite earlier success in containing the outbreak. Vietnam reports first ever death from coronavirus as it struggles with renewed outbreak after 99 days without any cases. Or my favorite, Vietnam, an ancient town struggles with a new COVID-19 outbreak. Even before the outbreak in Da Nang, Hoi An's people were devastated by the loss of tourists. Now the slight hope of economy recovery has been dashed. Wow, this makes things in Vietnam sound really terrible, huh? Yes, we are having struggles and dealing with hardship compared to our standards, but certainly not compared to the countries where these news reports come from. In 8th month of fighting the virus, we have had about 500 cases, and two days ago, we had our first COVID-19 death, which is definitely sad. But seriously, compared to what's happening in the world right now, specifically in the USA and in the UK, where these news agencies are located, do you really think it can be said that we are struggling and devastated and our hopes have been dashed? The real story is how efficiently, rapidly and decisively our nation has responded to this second outbreak, just like we did with the first outbreak. Our government knows exactly what to do and we've been preparing for this for months, so there's no surprise. By comparison, let's look at how Vietnam media headlines sound. Second COVID-19 related death in Vietnam. Vietnam reports 37 new cases of COVID-19. Hanoi orders shutdown of bars, karaoke venues, and roadside stores starting August 1st. See, you can cover the news in Vietnam without adding in sensationalist words to make everything look chaotic and out of control. Again, any one of those Western headlines on its own might not be so terrible, but the pattern is very clear. Capitalist media wants to make the situation in Vietnam look as terrible as possible. As I've talked about in many videos before, this is because the mainstream media of most capitalist countries such as the USA and the UK have a strong bias against my little country. I have documented this in many videos, which I will also link to in the description. So anyway, that's why I'm making this video now. I want to try to be a step ahead, and I will tell you the truth as we see it right here in Vietnam before you read any more anti-Vietnam propaganda about this situation. Okay, so that was how it started. Now let's talk about what our government did to deal with this. 
Right after those first two cases were confirmed, our government immediately put the hospitals where they were receiving treatment into full quarantine. At the same time, we asked those patients for their traveling history, and then based on that, we tracked and traced all the people that they had physical contact with. Now our government worked to track and trace every one of those people who were tested positive. We have added an additional 70,000 people in 7 total provinces, meaning the total number of people in quarantine is 81,000. And one of those 81,000 people, 14,000 people are in quarantine facilities, while 67,000 people are in home quarantine. The government is giving free COVID-19 tests to every single person in quarantine, and so far, we have found nearly 100 new cases. All the people in quarantine also receive free food and other things they need to leave until the quarantine ends. Every person who has COVID-19 will also receive free healthcare treatment until they are completely recovered. In order to find out why the virus returned to Vietnam, our doctors analyzed the virus DNA and found out that this is a new strain of COVID-19, one that has never been seen before in our country. Previously, we had five different strains of COVID-19. This is the sixth unique strain to be found here. This is the evidence that this strain of virus came from outside of Vietnam. It means somebody brought it into Vietnam probably sometime in early July. We already sent this DNA sequence to the World Gene Bank to check which countries also have this virus strain, which might give us some clues for the answer. The travel history of the two first patients showed that they didn't go out of Vietnam at all, which means the first person who brought this new strain of COVID-19 here is still out there somewhere. Maybe they don't even know that they are carrying the contagious virus. We have to find this person because if they don't require treatment, they may have spread it and may still be spreading it to many other people. Our government is working very hard to find out who and where they are. We have many theories about how this new virus strain got into Vietnam. At first, many people speculated that it was brought in through Chinese nationals who had smuggled themselves into many provinces in Vietnam, especially Da Nang. Because a large group of these undocumented Chinese people were found in Da Nang a few weeks earlier. These people snuck in through the jungle and through boats and were staying in luxury villas near the beach here in Da Nang. They paid kinda a lot of money to hire local Vietnamese people to bring them into Vietnam. They didn't report themselves to the Vietnamese police because they didn't want to stay in quarantine and of course also because they didn't have a visa. Until now, nobody knows exactly why most of them came to Vietnam. One Chinese family came from Cambodia where they were visiting family members but we have no idea what the rest of these Chinese people were doing here. I don't think they are just normal tourists because sneaking into Vietnam is very dangerous and the danger of being caught during this pandemic is very high. I also don't think they came here to work because they were not working in any company or factory when we found them. They were all in hotels or even in luxury villas when our police found them. It also doesn't seem like they are gangsters or smugglers because many of them are families, some even have children. They came here in big groups, usually from 10 to 30 people, and they just stay inside the hotels and villas, rarely going out. However, when we tested these Chinese people, all of the results were negative. They are now in a quarantine area anyway, just to be safe during this investigation. Because none of these undocumented Chinese people got positive results, it is very unlikely that they brought in the virus. Because of this, many Vietnamese people are now calling for people to stop blaming them. In addition, the government is discouraging people from having any xenophobic feelings against Chinese people. Our government is also trying to report the news as neutrally as possible to avoid racism from Vietnamese towards Chinese. Beyond that, the status of these Chinese people is currently a mystery. We are now still waiting for the answer from the police about who they are and why they came to Vietnam. All we know is that until now, there's no evidence to prove that they brought the virus here. Another theory about how this new COVID-19 strain came to Vietnam was the 13 patient that was found because he happened to be an American guy. But the fact is, he's been living in Vietnam for 3 years without leaving. He hasn't traveled outside of Vietnam the whole time, so it's impossible for him to be the patient zero. There's one more theory and I think this is the most possible one. Maybe there were some Vietnamese smugglers or some rich assholes who snuck into Vietnam and brought the virus here. Maybe they were bringing in some kind of illegal substances. Or maybe they paid a bribe or just didn't want to stay in quarantine. 
Of course, this is just speculation, and we don't have any evidence, but that's the only thing I can think of for now. Let me also say, it's very weird that the first patients were found in this part of Da Nang. It's actually pretty close to our neighborhood. And let me tell you this, this is the very local Vietnamese area of Da Nang. There are not really many tourist attractions or places tourists would come. Most of the people in this part of Da Nang are fishermen and blue-collar workers. There is a beach nearby, but it's not the famous tourist one. It's a place where mostly only local Da Nang city residents go swimming. So it's very strange that it cropped up here before anywhere else. The luxury villas where the Chinese people were found were actually very far away and across a river in the tourist area. So it's weird that we had these cases here and not where the tourists usually stay. Anyway, as long as patient zero doesn't report voluntarily to the government, it will be pretty difficult to find out what's going on. Maybe that's why until now we still haven't found out patient zero yet. Anyway, I guess we will just have to wait for the officer answer about how COVID-19 came back to Vietnam. We Vietnamese people in the lockdown area believe that everything is gonna be okay because we can see that our government is taking this very seriously. And yes, sadly, we are back in lockdown. All seven provinces where COVID-19 has been found, patients are being advised to maintain social distancing, wearing masks in public is required. In Da Nang, which has the most COVID-19 cases, we shut down all services and businesses such as restaurants, bars, clothing stores, gyms, swimming pools, and also all the beaches. People are back to wearing masks, washing our hands, keeping socially distant, and so on. Our whole country is back to fighting against COVID-19 one more time. If there's one thing that really makes me happy, it's that Vietnamese people are working very hard to help each other and help the government to once again contain the virus. Actually, I was a bit worried because on the morning when it was announced restaurants were shutting down, we went grocery shopping and arrived at the grocery store as soon as they opened up at 8 a.m. And there were a lot of people there buying up as many vegetables and other basic food supplies as they could. I was worried we would have the same kind of shortages and panic buying as we saw in other countries. But then we went back to the grocery store a few hours later and they were totally restocked. The government has been telling us there's no reason to panic buy or stock up on food because the food supply chain is totally fine. And well, they were right. Now the grocery stores are totally normal and there's plenty of food and not too many people shopping. Actually, everything is very quiet and peaceful in the city right now. There are four big hospitals in Da Nang that are now in quarantine. The quarantine order was very sudden, so all of our doctors and nurses could not go back home to prepare. They like essential things such as toothbrushes, toothpaste, fresh clothes, shampoo, and especially nutritious meals. Thousands of people got locked down so the canteens in those hospitals are unable to prepare meals for everyone. When we heard about that emergency situation, immediately dozens of restaurant owners decided to cook free meals and send them to those hospitals. Dozens of grocery store owners decided to donate clothes, toothbrushes, milk, bread, and other needed items. We have had a hundred new cases in just a week, so it's a fact that we lack doctors and nurses in Da Nang. But two days ago, a long line of doctors and nurses who were working in private clinics volunteered to go to work in our quarantine areas. Vietnam is a poor country, but we are rich in spirit, and we are always willing to share what we have to help other people. There's one more story that I want to tell you. As you know, Vietnam has been sending dozens of special flights to foreign countries to return our citizens home. For example, we just picked up 219 Vietnamese workers from Equatorial Guinea. More than half of them confirmed that they had COVID-19. They didn't receive good treatment from the government in Equatorial Guinea, and going back to Vietnam is their only hope. We also sent a flight to San Francisco to take nearly 300 Vietnamese home. So yes, Vietnam did evacuate people from the richest country in the world where virtually no precautions are being given to normal working class people. I really feel sorry to all of our comrades over there in the USA. You should understand this. It is not easy at all to send a flight like that. We have to repair airplanes, sterilize them when they come back and provide two weeks of quarantine to every returned citizen as well as the pilots and the health professionals. The cabin crew and the doctors must be all volunteers. We cannot force anybody to risk their life doing things that they don't want to. We also have to work with the local government in every nation to persuade them to let us land. 
fact, this is the very first time since the Vietnam War that direct flights from the USA to Vietnam have been flying like this. Long story short, these rescue flights are a huge and expensive effort by our government to bring our people home so they can be relatively safe and return to their families. And most Vietnamese people, especially people who need to be rescued from dangerous countries like the USA, really appreciate what our government is doing. But of course, there are still many ungrateful Vietnamese, especially anti-communists living abroad, who still talk shit about our government and our people. You know, when there was no pandemic, they criticized how horrible our communist regime was. But when the pandemic happened and they got treated badly in the capitalist countries they are living in, they immediately called this communist regime for help evacuating. But when we sent flights to save them, they still complained. They said things like, the Vietnamese government should have done this better and faster. Or there were too few flights. Or the flights were too expensive, blah blah blah. When I read those comments, I just want to fucking punch them in the face. Do you know how expensive it is to send a flight to get you home? Do you know how many people volunteer to risk their own health to go pick you up? Do you know that once you got here, we will have to pay for your quarantine, your food, your testing, and even the treatment? There are too many Vietnamese people who needed help. We cannot take them all in a short time. That's why we had to set children, old people, pregnant or infected people as priority. Be patient if you have to wait because they are people who need it more than you. And honestly, if you hate socialist Vietnam that much, why do you sign up to come back here? Why don't you just stay the fuck where you are and enjoy the capitalist heaven? Anyway, back to the main topic. I am sure that all the anti-communists who said that communist Vietnam has been lying and hiding the real numbers of COVID-19 cases would talk about what's happening in Vietnam soon. Here's a funny thing, if you think about it just for a little bit, you will know that what they have been saying about us makes no sense. Vietnam never hit the real number of COVID-19 cases because if we did, there's no reason for our government to make a big deal of these 100 cases right now. Why wouldn't we just keep lying to preserve our fake reputation if we really have been lying for months to the whole world? Why would we just suddenly announce 100 new cases in just one week, right before we were planning to reopen international flights to some countries and restart our economy? Vietnam is now facing our second lockdown order, and this outbreak is worse than the initial one. Our economy is definitely gonna suffer even more, but we will always put people's lives before capitalist profits. And we are totally open to tell the world that the situation in Vietnam has gotten bad again. At least it's gotten bad by our standards. Personally, I am not worried. I know it's gonna be difficult. I'm a bit sad because I cannot go to my yoga classes or go out to eat at the restaurants. But then I think about what life is like in the USA right now, what it's like in the UK, what it's like in all the capitalist countries that think they are so superior to Vietnam. I really hope you can get better situations in your so-called developed countries. I really hope you can convince your government to put the lives of working people ahead of capitalist profits. I feel fortunate living here where my government takes things so seriously. But it doesn't make me feel good to know that there are people suffering all around so much more because of this terrible disease. I have every reason to believe that Vietnam will win again, and I will make more updated videos about this so stay tuned. But for now, wherever you are, please stay safe and wear a mask and stay socially distant as much as possible. See you next week and be sure to subscribe. Bye bye!